Hi, I'm Jay with Family Handyman, and you know, our magazine's been around for 70 years, and in that time, we've seen a lot of innovations when it comes to power tools, but sometimes the old-fashioned hand tools are still the best tool for the job. Hand planes, chisels, saws, even scraper blades. Let me show you some of my favorites and how to use them. When it comes to hand planes, there's probably one for any purpose you can think of, but really, if you're only going to have one, it should be the block plane. I believe every carpenter and every homeowner should have one of these. When that door gets sticky in the summertime, a block plane can plane down just a little bit of that edge before you can even get a power tool out of the case. Now, if you're going to explore finer woodworking, the number 62 low angle jack plane from Wood River is probably my favorite hand plane on the market. It's super versatile and for about 200 bucks, you have a hand plane that will do almost anything for you. Now, when we're hand planing a, a piece of wood, it's important not to go straight on. What we want to do is skew that hand plane just a little bit. It makes the job the blade has to do a lot easier. And subsequently, it's a lot easier for you to push. And look at those beautiful shavings we get. Like most hand tools we could talk about, the spoke shave has been around for literally hundreds of years. It gets its name because it was the tool used to create spokes for wagon wheels. We're not making a lot of wagon wheels these days, but it still has a really good place in every wood shop. Instead of using sandpaper, we can use a spoke shave to get an even smoother surface in half the time. Let's say I've cut a curve with a bandsaw and I've got these, these marks on this edge now. And if I use sandpaper to get rid of them, I actually might make them worse. With a spoke shave, I can come in and make that edge smooth as glass. Now these are called card scrapers. Back before sandpaper was ever a thing, we used steel to smooth the surface of the wood. On the edge, it has a little burr. And as we scrape it along, it takes just a little bit of wood off the surface, leaving us with a beautifully smooth, open surface ready for finish. Now, if you have a saw in your garage or your workshop, it probably looks like this. And this is a fine saw for cutting two by fours or branch off your cherry tree in the front yard. But for fine woodworking, it's just not gonna cut it. And these saws are called back saws because they are supported by a stiff material on the back, making the blade itself very stiff. The reason we're gonna use these saws instead of a table saw or a router table is that it's just so much more satisfying to do it by hand. We use these saws for cutting tenons for mortise and tenon joinery or for dovetails. The tooth design will dictate how we use this saw, whether we're cutting across the grain or with the grain. Now this saw company has been around since 1776, so these types of saws go way back. This one is a fairly expensive tool. On the other hand, the back saws offered from Veritas typically cost less than a hundred bucks and in my opinion are the most comfortable saw handles on the market. Now another great tool from the past that we should all still have today is the chisel. The most common of which is the bench chisel and if you're going to have one set of chisels it should be these. We can hit them with a hammer or we can use them just as a hand tool. For more specific purposes like dovetail chisels, we have something that is beveled on the side so that allows us to get into nice tight areas to pair out that little last piece of wood. Now all these chisels aren't worth a thing unless they're sharp and that goes for hand plane blades too. I have a sharpening system here that's super simple that you can make yourself and you don't have to invest hundreds of dollars on wet stones and sharpening stones. Using wet or dry sandpaper, I start with 180 and I go up the grits, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and I end up at a 25 micron paper. Now that might not seem like it's very aggressive, but we can see that it still removes steel. 
So to begin, I'm gonna spritz a little water on all my sandpaper here. This lubricates the cutting action and makes everything a little easier. Now I've set my chisel up in my Veritas sharpening jig. There are sharpening jigs out there that cost less than 20 bucks that do a pretty darn good job. This is now set up for me to sharpen the bevel. And the reason I like a jig like this is I don't have to think about it. I learned how to sharpen all by hand, which is a pretty tough job. Every stroke you make has to be exactly the same. These jigs take that guesswork out of it. Now, as we progress in our sharpening grits, we spend less and less time on each one. Now on the final strop here, I'm using this Micron paper as a substitute for a leather strop. We want to pull only. We don't want to push. A, we might tear the paper, but in this way we're drawing a little wire edge off the front of that bevel. That's going to give us an extraordinarily sharp leading edge. So I think you can see it in the camera, that little millimeter wide micro bevel at the leading edge of that chisel. Now I've really just scratched the surface when it comes to hand tools, but what I love the most is that these tools that are hundreds and hundreds of years old are still relevant today. For more information on tools like this, visit FamilyHandyMan.com.